And that's exactly what we did. We got started on the walls of our home. Before we get into the creation of our walls, I want to show you another crazy way that James recently tackled one of his off-grid problems. You guys know that our neighbors, James and Doreen, built out a bus to live in and planned on traveling in it. But thankfully, for our sake, plans changed and they bought a new property in the area. They needed their shipping container moved from their original property to the new one, so we went over to help out. He put a couple giant foam blocks on the flatbed so that the container could sit on top above the wheel wells. James has a big idea for this foam and the insulation of our home, so stay tuned for that in the coming months. Baron and another neighbor of ours used the skid steer and wheel loader to lift the container as James backed the trailer underneath. James and Doreen adopt BLM donkeys and spend lots of time training and working with them to utilize them for hiking and adventuring. The Free Roaming Wild Horse and Burrow Act of 1971 protects wild horses and burrows, and the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, is responsible for their protection and population control. Oh, does the burro get jealous? BLM donkeys are donkeys that are born wild on public lands and, when overpopulated, are rounded up and adopted out to various training and rehoming programs. It's pretty interesting. You go, girl. Go, Danielle. That's awesome. And there's Doreen. James and Doreen had four daughters, so they're so good about encouraging young women to do cool, badass things. Like, I learned how to drive the skid steer once. Well, we actually oh yeah, the but we deleted the footage, so you've never seen it. <laughs> as far as I can see, I'm looking for the rounders and you're looking out for me. Oh, but why won't they let me be? I'm a high step of pop up way down in Tennessee. We are building our walls out of cement blocks filled with rebar and concrete. It's kind of like a faux adobe building. We're dry stacking because it's faster than using mortar and the seams caused by imperfections give it a more adobe-like look. We don't need or want perfectly seamless walls. We're building our home on our own. So to be able to see that in the walls, I think is pretty cool. We're definitely gonna take two of those windows. Um, Probably the ones that you had for cheap that you guys have already used, that'd be great for our purposes. And then um, I'll, I'll call you back about cutting some new ones. I think James keeps running off from all my pencils. I know I do. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it at all. I got a, I got a collection there. Why is it that you put the whole block in the corner instead of putting this? on the edge it's just stronger yeah it is because see here then you've got this pillar right here of concrete uh -huh. solid going all the way up and then you put a rebar in this corner you really I still need, need to drill, drill, you drill that. that you need to do that before you forget yeah. then then you have this solid pillar and this ties your whole 
corner together. That's what that's for. The outside of the walls will be insulated and both the interior and exterior will be finished with stucco. This building method is great for our sunny desert climate because the cement walls and floor create a thermal battery, absorbing heat from the sun and releasing it during our cool nights. Since we are in the desert, we can leverage the cool nights of the summer by keeping our windows open overnight, then closing and blocking the sun during the day. In the winter, all the blinds will be open to charge up the cement floor and walls through the day. James and Doreen used the same technique on their last home. It's a beautiful home. And they only had to use their wood stove a few times over winter during long stretches of winter storms. Because you have to stagger the blocks, each row has a few gaps where full blocks won't fit. Baron used a variable speed angle grinder with a masonry blade to cut the blocks to size. The angle grinder works great using our Yeti 3000 battery. And it is so nice not to have to run a gas generator all day. Very nice. For every wall edge and every corner, we drilled an extra hole for rebar to create a strong, supportive pillar from the ground up. And you don't have to push. You don't have to push, like, just, uh, you'll get a feel for it, but yeah, you just push a little. What do you think? I'm pretty good at that. You like that? Yep. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> On the back corners, we forgot to drill holes. You need to do that before you forget. Yeah. So we had to deconstruct the walls, drill, and reconstruct. I've taken apart this corner three times now. Each of these blocks weighs 40 pounds. So the work is hard, but progress is very quick. This is not an ad, but an announcement. Our crush on the brand Fjall Raven has now become an official relationship. We've been accepted into the Denver Fjall Raven Guide Program. It's an intimate ambassadorship program where we get to collaborate with the store, host events, and receive some sweet gear. We were just invited to attend the Fjall Raven Classic USA this year, a three-day trek hosted by Fjall Raven in many countries around the world, including Korea, Germany, and Sweden, to name a few. This year, the Classic USA is happening in Colorado, so you bet we're going. And as of right this second, there are still some tickets available if you want to attend. I will leave a link in the description for you to check it out. We love this brand, we love their sustainability practices and quality of clothing, and we are so grateful to be brought onto their guide team. Okay, we're about to do something. If it makes it in this video, it means that we did it. I think we're gonna go take a look at a Ford pickup truck. <laughs> See what we think about it, who knows? with us. Uh, just making sure they're buying nice things. <laughs> this thing is rad though. It's cool. I already gave it my stamp of approval. I gotta scoot the seat up just a tad. Oh, you see? <laughs> <laughs> the whole seat. <laughs> it needs a little work. Oh, but barely almost. Like that valve cover is not a big deal. And the underneath is so clean. Yeah. There's no rust under there. It's pretty cool. Dude, this thing is dope. I think so far from feeling it drive, it's solid as a rock. Um, it's four-wheel drive and it has lockers on the front, so if you lock the front wheels, you have insane crawling power if you take it like Baja or like off-roading or something. So this thing's kind of like a beautiful little hybrid. Take it to go by materials, 
Go off-roading at the same time. Hi, right, dude. What up? What do you think? I popped the hit. I think it's awesome. I think it's totally worth it. Do you inspire me? <laughs> it's cool too. It's, it's not. It's thing. like a vintage that I really like. Yeah, that's it. Move the bikes? Yeah. This thing is so cool. It's so cool. The dash flapping is problematic, but beyond that, it's yeah. A fair number of things need to be replaced. Just to have a truck for three grand is nice. And it's a good platform to start with, but we just gotta know that if we want it to be bomber, we're, it's gonna be a project. But it's like grown up Legos, you know, cause it's not as complicated and computer intensive as um, newer cars are. But since F-150s are the most sold vehicle in the United States, and this was a long run vehicle, like from the early 80s to the mid 90s, parts are pretty available. So we can go to junkyards and pick parts or just order them online and they're, um, pretty cheap and easy to get. Buying old and making new has been pretty effective for us so far. A few years ago, we could have replaced the Subaru with some like really nice Toyota Tacoma or something, but instead we put all of our money into the bank and purchased land and saved for materials to buy a home. Instead of spending 20 grand on a slightly newer truck, buy the old truck, put 20 grand into it. I think that's really cool. I think hey. this is a cooler truck than the new trucks. I do too. We don't have to justify it to ourselves. We're just trying to justify it to you. And we don't have to do that even. We're pretty sold on it. Reverse is down to the right, R for reverse. So first, second, third, fourth. First, fifth. so now what do you do? Push down the clutch, put it in first. Give it more gas, there you go. Now we're rolling. And that feels about right, right? Look, I just did it, that was no <laughs> yeah. problem. Yeah. It's not like the Mini, the Mini had a harder, Resistive. yeah. That was so much easier than any other time I've ever driven any of your cars. What do you think? The dirt bike has changed everything for me. Now I understand the mechanics of how it all works. Did you think about that we can keep the dirt bikes in the back of this? Up here? Yeah. How? With some ramps. Sick. <laughs> We are finishing up the first stacking of block so that we can pour on Monday. And my parents are here, so they are gonna straighten up the walls for us while I cut some more blocks. They're excited to help and it's really fun to work with them, so yay. Mom, you can bonk them, you can't hurt them. I think the corners for the most part we got plumbed up, but if you just double check them and if you can make them better. Good job, Foreman camp. James is going to see this and be like, why are you being so meticulous? It doesn't matter. No. <laughs> You're done fast. Yeah. So James and Doreen came over a couple hours ago to check on our progress and make sure we were ready to pour for tomorrow. And when James got here, he was like, yeah, I was wondering why you only stacked up four blocks high. We normally do eight. And I, I thought the whole time that we were stacking to four and then stopping to pour, but, uh, Turns out we can stack twice as high. So now we're almost done stacking up to eight. I was just trying to cut block to keep up with he and Doreen stacking because they're machines. And they just got done with a hike today before they came over here. They are 
impressive people. But we're pouring tomorrow afternoon, so I need to stack a bunch of block and cut a bunch of block. We'll have double the progress than I thought we would. So that's amazing. I just got a bust ass, so I'm gonna get through. So you could start cutting rebar um, on the corner. You want to lay it all the way to each of the ends. And then in the corner, you want to bend it so that it ties that whole row together. So you can just like step on it and bend it up to a right angle. Now we, I just knocked out all the bricks and we're gonna lay up the rebar to make a bond beam all the way around. And then we'll drop the vertical ones after that. So here we go. Why is this, like why do we do all this rebar? Does it really need it? The cement alone would be really strong, wouldn't it? Yeah, rebar just makes it a lot stronger. I about did when it first came out. I, well, you made my own mud that, real quick. Yeah, <laughs> Oh my god, my rib is 
is so far out of place. The rib? Why? It still feels pretty surreal that we're building our own house. Yes. It's hard for me to even perceive the progress that we've made because I see all of the things that are ahead of us. But having some walls up is pretty cool. The walls are helping make it seem more, more real. More visceral for sure. Next up, we need to cut the headers for the windows on the mill and continue stacking block. And then we'll be almost on our second story and ready to start putting the roof and stuff together. Yay, we're excited. We are excited as much as we are trepidatious. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you really dug it and want to see what we're doing in the future, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Au revoir.